I just love doing what I do. The, the, the thing about it is, make sure you got enough love in your heart to keep going, and God will keep you going. Ruby Taylor said raising children was an assignment from God. When she adopted her first child in 1988, she had no idea what she was in for. Many of the children she adopted suffered everything from fetal alcohol syndrome to mental health issues. Back 30 years ago, I had no clue about mental illness. So I just thought, oh, we just love them and that'd be enough. But that's not true. Ruby tells me she got the help she needed in a hospital parking lot. As we was walking to the car, I was very frustrated. And uh, this lady came running behind me and she said, here, call this, this lady. She can help you. And that was uh, Ramona Deist of NAMI. Ruby says that NAMI volunteer gave her the tools necessary to raise her adopted children. I talked with Suzanne Kellum from NAMI who explains what the organization is all about. We offer a family support group and you can come to this family support group and meet people who aren't going to judge you or your loved ones are going to understand what's going on. They're going to give you sympathy. They might be able to help you solve some problems. In addition to the skills she learned from NAMI, Ruby works to educate herself on how to improve the mental health of her children. I wanted to know all the signs. I wanted to know all the behaviors, all the signs. So I would stay up late at night just studying and researching. Ruby has advice for other parents who are struggling with children suffering from mental illness. What I try to teach my kids is God didn't give up on me so I can't give up on you. Ruby says seeing her adopted children grow into successful adults makes all her hard work worth it. It's the big reward. It's the, it's the big reward when you see them eager to do better, eager to break that cycle and where they came from. It is just, and then you just look at these kids and they just so beautiful. There were eight times that we stayed more than 72 hours in the ER waiting for services. Nicole Knight is struggling to get her son the help he needs. Knight says her son's mental health has been worsening over the past seven years. The 17-year-old currently sits in a state-run mental health facility in the northern Michigan community of Grayling. He was arrested for attacking his mom. I've been told to walk away from my child, and I will not do it. He's my child, and no matter what he does, I'm going to stand there and advocate for him and try to help him. Knight believes if her son was able to get the proper mental health care when he was younger, he would not be where he is today. She started this Facebook group to share her story and quickly found out she wasn't the only parent in this situation. There are kids with serious psychiatric illness that are being sent home from the hospital all the time because there's no beds. In Michigan, there are 2,200 private hospital beds dedicated for mental health patients. This is a ratio of one for every 300 people. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services has 625 beds scattered over five facilities. The Caro Center in Huron County lost 50 beds last year due to staffing shortages. Parent Nicole Knight calls this a crisis. So I asked MDHHS Director Elizabeth Hertel what the state plans on doing about it. If someone needs to be in a facility, are we going to be seeing more facilities or more beds available? We're looking to get more residential type settings available, but not inpatient settings. So the closings that uh, began really in the 60s and in Michigan, you know, went through the late 90s into the early 2000s and closing some of our institutions to bring people in, back to the community was, I think, really important in ensuring that people had uh, community supports and resources to get services. Previous Governor Rick Snyder broke ground on a new $115 million psychiatric hospital in Cairo, which would have housed 200 beds. When Governor Gretchen Whitmer took office, she scaled down the project, scrapped the plan, and opted for a renovated 100-bed facility. Hertel says the focus needs to shift from state-run facilities to putting the money into the private sector. They understand the needs, they have the providers available, um, and then being able to serve those communities with those shorter-term residential options is really important. Knight disagrees. She said private companies care about one thing and one thing only, money. 
if the state of Michigan funnels billions of dollars to all these private organizations, you're saying they are still going to just look out for the bottom line, the dollar. I think it's going to go to the CEOs and the directors, and I think the kids are not going to benefit as much as they claim they will. Hertel believes allowing the people to have the care they need in their community is important. There's significant investment to expand programs that will move people back into the community, into a community-based setting once they're able to be discharged from an inpatient psychiatric hospital. Knight believes Michigan should also use a portion of the budget surplus to boost mental health care in schools. If we have those resources in our school where a child who's maybe just having some bullying issues or maybe a little depression because of a family situation, they could potentially go there and get some resources that the family couldn't otherwise afford. <laughs>